حوض اللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نحمد و نسلی علی رسول الکریم و علی آلی و اصحاب اجمعین رب شرح لی صدری و سر لی امری و اہل العقدت من لسانی افقہ قولی و جعل لی وزیرا من اہلی آمین رب العالمین Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Allah Ta'ala has given us the opportunity to be alive for one more Jummah in this pandemic, what's going on. I recommend all of you to please take very good care of your Salah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, make things easier for us inshallah. Today I'm going to speak about our love towards Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Alhamdulillah, we are all Muslims and we know that one of the very important part of our Iman, of our faith is that we should accept Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the last and final messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. When we say last and final means, last means there was a second last, there was a third last, means there were prophets and messengers before Prophet Muhammad. So when we say last, automatically the other messengers we do have faith and we do have iman on them second thing when we say prophet muhammad sallam, is the last and final messenger then we have to have that love we have to have that obligation to obey his commands whatever he has said and third thing dear brothers and sisters which is very important for us and this is where most of the problem I wouldn't say problem, but this is where the most of the negligence is there in our society. See, nowadays, one of the very important parts, I, or I would rephrase that, I would say nowadays, one of the very normal part of our life, what, uh, what it has become is ibadat only. Okay, when I say ibadat only, I am referring to namaz, as salah. I'm referring to Psalm, I'm referring to Zakat, I'm referring to Hajj, charity, and all those kind of things. This is Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Most of the Muslims, they try to do their best when it comes to these things. They try to do the uh, uh, Salah, Alhamdulillah, they try their best to do five times and all those things. But one of the very big part of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam teachings is missing. Now this is what we need to understand that what is missing and how. Now see when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to this world and he was revealed the first wahi and he went with that wahi to the kuffar, kuffar and mushrikeen of Makkah. What did they say? What did they ask him? They said, I'm just summarizing the thing so I can you know uh, highlight the points what I wanted to say. So the first thing they said to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, oh, Oh Muhammad وسلم, what are you saying you are one of us we have been praying to this worshipping these gods praying to them for from generations and suddenly you have come with this new message of Islam what is Islam and when Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he presented Islam to them so dear brothers and sisters I would like to raise a question over here did they had any problem with that they did not you're right thank you very much they did not had any problem with Islam why because they were doing the tawaf of Kaaba anyway they were doing the charity anyway they were giving as I've said zakat they were fasting in their own way anyway so what was the problem the problem was when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said it's not your ibadat only it's your individual and your all community, your whole, you whole as a society has to come under the command, under the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're trying to get the difference what I'm saying? The difference was not about going and telling them to pray, to do the salah, to the psalm, to do the hajj. They were doing it. The problem was when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said that, okay, now you are people of Mecca. Now, Whatever you do, whatever you do has to be as per the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what was their other question? They said, okay, fine. And who are you? And this was another problem for them. When he said, I am the chosen person from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is going to convey you the wahi, the revelation which comes to me? 
what did they said said no nah, this is not possible no 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 we cannot accept you above us we are the leaders we are the sardar of quraish we are the one who tells how the society will operate we are the ones who decide what are the rights and wrongs for our society you don't tell us you don't tell us what we are. no 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 this is not acceptable and i don't want to go into history because it's a topic in itself a very huge a very long topic but if i would try if i will rephrase and resummarize it what was the wahi what was the revelation which prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was presenting them it was al quran right whole of the life of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he presented his message the message of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through what through quran he used to call people towards allah through quran he used to resolve the problems of people to through quran he used to tell people what is right and wrong through quran he used to teach people how to read recite understand and live their life according to the wahi according to the commandments of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which are revealed in al quran and this is what i would like to highlight my dear brothers and sisters that unfortunately a very sad truth a very bitter truth of our society nowadays is that we are trying our best to be very good at salah at saum at zakat maybe if we'll have a chance we'll do 3 4 5 hajj alhamdulillah rabbil alamin may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept that may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our efforts in that but on the other part ask yourselves ask yourselves on the other part when it comes to al quran the message which was revealed to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the message which he took towards the humanity which he took towards all the world which he presented to everyone what was it it was quran and what is our attitude towards quran what do we do for ourselves to learn to understand to know the importance see if i ask you right now what do we believe about quran we will say we all have iman we all believe that quran is the word of god which was revealed to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is safe preserved authenticated everything excellent alhamdulillah rabbil alamin we all know that but brothers and sisters the important question is in spite of believing all these things what do we know about quran what have we done for ourselves to get related to quran what and right now see when sometimes you know i uh, i've been to like universities and given the lectures not here back in home and there like maybe 400 300 people and i would ask okay how many people have read so and so book well, any book i don't want to say the name so lots of hands will be raised yes yes now i'll say excellent now how many people over here also this is the question i don't need an answer but if i'll ask right now how many people of us have finished the quran in this past ramadan reading reciting most of us will raise the hand and say yes i did alhamdulillah maybe twice or maybe thrice inshallah i expect this alhamdulillah but the third most important question if i ask you right now how many of us have read the translation of quran i'm not saying tafsir only the translation of quran in your own language from alham to annas no answer is required but ask yourself when was the last time you did it that you sat with the quran with the translation you opened and that wahi that message which was revealed to that prophet which we believe we have a part of our faith that is the last messenger and we believe that this wahi was revealed to him and we love him when was the last time we tried to read that quran with the translation believing that this quran is talking to me for my salvation for my hidayah for my guidance not humanity i am talking about for me myself 
when I die, I go into the grave. I answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever I have done in this life. So for me, myself, what I have done with the Quran. So this is, brothers and sisters, this is the thing today. I wanted to highlight that as a Muslims, we go around, we do a lot of things, we try to attract people we are trying to say that we are the best and unless and until you're a muslim you cannot get salvation right we all say that alhamdulillah 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 we believe in that but what is the most important part what if the person you are referring you're you're giving dawa to he turns around and says okay tell me what do you know about the revelation what are you presenting me what islam you're presenting me you look at muslims you look at this you look at i mean like he can point out a lot of things he can point out tens and tens of things so what do we present to him same what prophet Muhammad, as a muslim what do we owe to quran i will try to tell you in small points because these points are lectures in itself if you try to discuss each and every point it be a lecture in itself so the very first thing is okay now one more thing what i am presenting over here is it's not me i'm not the one who has compiled it I mean, uh, who has made it, sorry, I've just compiled it. I've just taken it from different ulamas. And whatever I'm trying to tell you here is all muttafiqun alay between ulama. It's, there is nothing which people disagree with. So the very first thing about our iman, uh, about the Quran is our iman and how do, and what kind of attitude of reverence we have towards it. As we say, iman and ta'zeem. See, Iman, if we start talking about Iman, it's a huge subject. It's a, it's a series of lectures in itself. But dear brothers and sisters, look into yourself. Question yourself. When was the last time you tried to know or you tried to study, educate yourself? Yourself, not your children. Yeah, that's another problem in this country. You send your children to Sunday schools. You want them to learn everything. And to yourself, Allah is Ghafoor Rahim. This is a big problem. Anyhow, coming back, when was the last time we tried to learn Iman from Quran? Me, I, I myself, when was the last time I did it? When was the last time I tried to learn that what attitude should I have towards Quran? What should I do? If Quran says something or if I have to present this Quran to somebody, what should I tell to that person that this is what I know and this is what you have to believe in? See, it's very easy. It's very easy to get in debate with somebody because you can just say anything. He would just say anything. You can keep on arguing. But the most difficult thing is to get yourself educated about something you are born with. Most of us, we are born in this world in a Muslim family. Most of us. And we think some, I don't know why, but in some way we have a belief that because we are born in a Muslim family so the understanding of Islam and understanding of Iman and understanding of prophethood it's all revealed to us probably because my mother fed me and she was a Muslim no this is not the way you look at you look at Sahaba radiallahu anhum them they went to Prophet Muhammad for each and everything. They asked him details. They asked him a lot of questions. They asked him about Islam, Quran, Iman. Now, when was the last time me and you as a Muslim questioned our Iman? Questioned our Islam? Questioned our Iman about the book, Al Quran, which was revealed to Prophet Muhammad? When was the last time we did that? Second thing, practical life, as we say, recitation. And Tartil, Tartil is, is another word which has come into Quran. When we say Tartil, it means slow and thoughtful reading of the Quran with proper pronunciation. And what is the first thing we need for that? It's Tajweed. Again, dear brothers and sisters, maybe I learned Tajweed 20 years ago when my father was alive, or maybe 30 years ago when my grandfather was there. He used to send me to one of the Qari, and I learned that. Excellent. Now, do you still know how to read that? Second thing, let's say for some reason you couldn't learn that. What is stopping you now from learning it? 
if you believe that you are a Muslim and you have love for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and you believe that whatever you are doing for the sake of Islam, the part of that love which you have towards Prophet is there. So this book which was given to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam for the tajweed, what we are doing for ourselves, all Islam, all Iman, when it comes to these things, is for our children. Is for our children. This is what I have seen. You know, they would masters maybe. And what kind of service we want from him to teach our children, five, six year old. And what do we learn from him? How much you are going to charge us? Is this what kind of attitude we should have towards Quran? Second thing in this Tilawa, daily recitation. I'm pretty sure most of the people, inshallah, would be doing it. But how many of us are understanding? How many are so far? See, I'll okay, I'll rephrase. For every word of Quran, you get ten ajr. We all know that, right? You say alif, lam, mim. It's not one word, but it's alif and lam and mim. Thirty. Excellent, superb. Nowhere in Quran it's mentioned. This this Quran has come down to give you reward of ten ajr per word. Sub part. These are all. Over times, these are all extra ajr we get when we read Quran. But unfortunately, now it has changed other way around. Why do you read Quran? Oh, I read one page. There are one thousand words. Multiply by ten. Fifteen hundred words. Multiply by ten. And then what happens when you read Quran? You go out. What is your understanding about Quran? Nothing. What is your understanding about good and bad? Nothing. What is your responsibility as a good Muslim towards society? Nothing. Why? Because the Jews is for my children. Understanding is for my children. And what is for me? For me, Allah is Ghafoor Rahim. I know it might sound very bitter, but you look around yourself and see what I'm saying is right or wrong. You look around yourself. People would say, you know, I mean, like, okay, no, let's let's, let's leave it up to here. I don't want to go into detail. This it's you now a lot of things. And one more thing about it. How much time we are putting to learn the Quran, memorize the Quran? This is a part where most of the people would say, "You know what? I have my mobile. I'll just take it out and you know I'll read from it." So, brothers and sisters, we have to commit ourselves to learn the Quran as much. I'm not going into details again because a lot of fadail hadith about it. Coming to the next thing, third point. Tazakkur, tazakkur, and tadabbur about Quran. Tazakkur means understanding, as I've already mentioned, and tadabbur means that you try to understand Quran spiritually as per your understanding. How many times we open Quran and we try to see what Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is saying without learning and understanding? We just reject things, saying it's fourteen hundred years old. It's it's it may not be applicable now, so we need a new version. Okay, even if you need a new version, you still need to understand the old version. You still need to understand the basics, the fundamentals. And Islamic fundamentals comes from Quran. And one ayah, it's beautiful ayah, Allah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says in Surah Al Qamar, Ayah thirty two, "Walakad yassarna al Quran al dhikri." That we have made this Quran easy as a reminder. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala saying, "Easy, easy." Fahal min mutakir. Is there anyone who takes the heat? Is there anyone who tries to do that? And when it comes to us, Quran is the most difficult thing in our life. We don't have time. To, we don't have time to understand it. And learning Arabic, oh my God, it's like it's like a bomb. It's like oh no way, Arabic, no. You know why? Okay, I'm trying to rephrase to say why. Because it may come out very bitter. Why is because we don't have importance. We try to say we have iman, we don't have importance. Okay, fourth thing coming to next. As I have said, Islam, we are the presenters of Islam. People look at us as the ambassador of Islam. Either you like it, you don't like it. You have beard, you don't have beard. By the time you say you are a Muslim, you are on a radar. You like it or you don't like it. It's as simple as that. So as a Muslim. If we do not do these three, four things, 
what do we go out and propagate? So propagation of Quran is a must for every Muslim. And then there's another word I've used, tabi'een, means description and explanation. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, okay, I'll make it easy, even easier. Just one question. Let's say if a non-Muslim says to you that why do you pray? What all answers you can give? The you are saying tongue? I mean, what answers can come to your mind? What answers comes to your mind? The reply would be that do you think Allah needs this from you? Let it be any answer you are going to give him. So how would we know what to answer? <coughs> As Prophet Muhammad said, last thing I would say that بَلِّغُ anni walau aya Convince from me even if it even if it is one verse. It's Rawal Bukhari. So dear brothers and sisters, this was the last thing what I had to say. And in one line, I would like to summarize what I have said. If we believe ourselves to be Muslims with